My name is Alejandro. I work for Catorce Media, which is Cuba's first independent digital uh, news outlet. I'm also a fellow here at the Reynolds Journalism Institute. And I'm going to share with you today how we distribute our content in a quite uh, restrictive environment in terms of media freedoms, but also in terms of connectivity and access to the internet. So we have a double conundrum, right? We're a digital news outlet that produces digital content in a, in a country with a very low internet penetration rate, and we're also an independent outlet that is producing content in a country where press freedom is definitely uh, in, in, uh, in danger. So just a little bit of context about Cuba. Uh, Cuba's internet penetration rate is about 5%, so the access to uh, internet is quite limited inside of the country. It's also a country that has no laws per se in its constitution that allows for free press to function. So you cannot have really an international uh, independent outlet, or you can't have an independent outlet be a part of, of your uh, media structure. In that environment, we have decided to uh, launch Catorce Medio. And now, when we do it, we did it in, a, in an interesting way. We decided that we were going to be a, a true independent and, and objective outlet. You had seen in the media space already in Cuba independent bloggers, citizen journalists who were out there reporting from the ground what they were seeing and what they were doing, but a lot of that was in their personal blogs, not necessarily uh, through an editor and, and an editorial process. You also had on the other end state media, newspapers that are controlled by the monopoly of the state inside of, of the country. We tried to do something in between, right? We were, we have an editorial team, we have an editorial process, and we are reporting about every facet of uh, society, from politics to the economy, from culture to entertainment, and we're doing it from an independent uh, perspective. So when we look at our distribution channels, okay, I'm showing you a picture of one of our reporters trying to access our content, and as you can see there, He's not getting anywhere. This is being done in one of the public Wi-Fi hotspots inside of the country where you can access internet. Now, the page is blocked, right? So our content has to live off platform. There's no other way to distribute it inside of the island. So one of the ways that we do it on the website is through a proxy. As you can see, there's a difference right here in the, um, in the, in the top banner, that hide is a proxy that does not register a Cuban IP address and allows you to access the content from inside of Cuba. But even then, the connection and the speed at which you access that content is very, very slow. So it'll take you anywhere from five to 10 minutes to be able to, to really load a page and view it. And so if, you look, if we go back to the title of, our, of, the, of the presentation, the story is our mothership. Our story has to be able to live outside of this restrictive environment. And so in order to do this, we've come to the challenge of how do we expand our distribution? How do we do it offline and off-platform from the website? And so one of the things that we decided to do is definitely forget about on or off, or we have tried to be as multi a platform as possible, because that's the best way for us to reach a wider audience inside of Cuba. We also have an audience outside of Cuba, but we're, we're focusing really on making sure that more news, more independent news, gets inside of Cuba. So social media is one of them. Cubans are coming online, when they do come online, through Facebook. And they're on Facebook and spending the time uh, on Facebook as they would in any other uh, web browser. We don't go to Google Chrome as our fir or, or to Safari as our first uh, entrance into the, into, into the internet world. We do it through our Facebook apps. In, we, we're also doing something, leveraging newsletters, because they're, they're a, a key way to reach the Cuban audience. Cuba does not have a fairly wide internet infrastructure, but it does have at least a, three million users of internet, of, of a, something called intranet, which is uh, an email server that allows you to have your own email address on your phone. 
Cubans don't have data plans per se as we know them here uh, in the United States on their phone, so the email becomes a very lightweight solution to uh, spread information. And we're also doing something which is uh, an offline distribution network called El Paquete. So the way El Paquete works is think of Netflix, uh, but on steroids and all offline. In El Paquete, you have movies, you have documentaries, you have uh, newspapers, you have magazines, you have a little bit of everything. And how do we distribute it? Well, let's pretend Randy here is our packet distributor. He will download the content in one way or another because there's always a way to get things around in Cuba. And he will distribute it via USBs and hard drives to individuals inside of the island. Right? And so people will come and actually purchase this from Randy. For a dollar or, or two a week, Randy will download it into my hard drive. I will take it home and I'll watch Game of Thrones, I'll watch the latest documentary, and I will also have the opportunity to read, if I so desire, our PDF version of Catorce y Medio. Those are the challenges that we have to come around, or have, we have to go around, when we do our distribution. Because it is a balance of offline and online. As you can tell, social media is online, El Paquete is offline, and our newsletter distribution is somewhere in between. Now, there's a phrase in, in Spanish uh, called dale, which is like go. You know, you, you, you make it happen, you, you go, you make it, uh, and you do whatever you got to do, okay? We are trying that. It's actually also Dale in, in English, and the person that, <laughs> that we have been working with at, at uh, RJI in my fellowship is also named Dale. Uh, so that's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, so w we haven't stopped in, in our multi-platform uh, experiment, okay? And we're now going to try a couple of new things. And the first is on, our, um, on the right-hand side here. It's an offline sharing app. Basically, what we've created here at RJI with the fellowship is a mobile app that allows readers in Cuba to connect to Wi-Fi whenever they have the opportunity to do so, which is not always, and download the latest content of our news. Then they're able to take that information and consume it offline through in, the, in their mobile devices. It's stored on their phone. Now, the trick is, then you can share that information via Bluetooth by connecting phones with your uh, friends or your neighbors or whoever it is that you might, uh, that might also have the app. The apps update themselves, right? There's a transfer of information all happening offline that allows for the multiplication of our news sources with maybe only one person ever really connecting to the internet. This is uh, now, we're beginning to do the beta testing in, in, in Cuba, in our newsroom, and we hope that it's a way to reach more folks inside of the island, especially individuals who might not necessarily have as steady of a connection to, uh, to the internet. The other thing that we're trying is leveraging the fact that Cubans are coming online through Facebook, we're beginning to experiment and build a messaging bot of sorts through Facebook Messenger and through WhatsApp, which is more and more uh, being used. Messaging in Cuba is, is also a, f uh, a more popular way uh, to get information, right? And so what this messaging bot will do is not necessarily be as, um, as you have the messaging bots here that gives you brief moments of information, but rather longer pieces of information so that you can, because you can't really read them if you're not um, if, you're, if you have limited time on the internet and if you have limited access to those web uh, content. So we're going to be beginning to have, to give information to the, to the reader, but also begin to have a conversation with that reader. And one of the things that you really don't know uh, in, in Cuba very much is what do people think about different things? Because there are limited platforms for folks to express those, their, those opinions openly. So we hope that this messaging bot is going to allow us to begin to collect more information about what are Cubans really thinking about. Do we, ca do we care about only political things? Of course not. We want to ask them what they think about regular things. What, what do you, where do you spend your time on? What are you doing uh, on the weekend? What, that, that's information that will be 
in essence, one of the first times that Cubans are being asked this, right? And so, what have we discovered in this journey of us going off platform? One is that our news feeds are so vital for us, right? The ability for us to be able to distribute the information on the mobile app is very much dependent on those news feeds. So as a piece of advice in terms of, of what has worked for us is getting that news feed correct and making sure that those, that those news feeds are built properly allows for any of the offline uh, or off-platform distribution to be easier. And uh, Dale can, can attest to how much work he had to do with our news feed because it was not uh, built as properly as, as we would have liked. Uh, but it has been really, once you have that core piece of information, the distribution outside of the website becomes much, much easier. And the other thing that we've learned in this process is we've begun to get to know our audience much better. And we've divided our audience really into what I call um, waders, swimmers, and divers. And we heard a little bit about this yesterday with the super users. Right? This is a very similar concept. We've begun to kind of divide and segment our audience into the waders, the swimmers, and the divers. And we're trying to make sure that we are really producing content for our divers because those are becoming the champions of our platform. And those are the ones that we are beginning to experiment with ways to monetize uh, through a membership model. The swimmers are the individuals who come and are part of the, uh, of the publication, but are not that yet invested into it. They represent an opportunity for us, right? And if we're able to reach them, they are able to become, hopefully, one day uh, divers. And the waders are the ones that might not necessarily become winners or uh, swimmers or divers, but that are a part of the community as well. And that might be reading us just once or twice uh, a week, but that are still part of who we are, right? And they can also become champions as well, because if they share their news w with others, it's a way to multiply our effort. The last thing I'll say about this, and especially with, with our community, is we are a Cuban nation, one Cuban nation, right? But we're not in one geographic location. And so when we look at our audience, we have to also look at the Cuban American community in the United States and the Cuban diaspora all over the world, right? And that diaspora community plays an important role in our distribution as well, especially in this, um, in this graphic, because they are able to be the champions that can distribute that information back to Cuba when they email their family members, when they travel to the island, when they have a connection with their, uh, with their individuals, with, with their family members uh, on the other side, right, on the geographic Cuba. And so they have become one of more, our most active champions. So as we create this, um, this, this kind of funnel of, of audience development, we're, we're placing a lot of emphasis on that diaspora, and we want that diaspora to be the divers that are then able to kind of replicate and multiply that effect, because they can take that information back uh, to Cuba. So with that, I will take any questions. We have about six minutes. Questions, yeah. Hang on just a second. Can you talk about how you're funded, how big your staff is, how you all make a living with what you're doing? Yeah, that's, that's well, I think we have a lot of the same challenges that Ventures Africa has. Uh, we, in, in the Cuban context, is very important to preserve the independence of the outlet, right? Um, and so we have said from day one that we will not take any type of government funding uh, and that we will not take any type of funding from any political party. So all of our funding is strictly independent, right? And so we've experimented with several things. We do have ads on our site, and that has brought in some revenue. We are syndicating our content, similar to how Venture Africa's is, uh, doing it with other news outlets around the world, and we're writing in some cases for uh, those outlets, and that has been able to uh, bring in some revenue streams as well. We are also doing content, uh, um, sponsored content, and, and, and sponsorships of sorts, especially outside of, of, of Cuba, uh, with the community in Miami, which is uh, an active uh, Cuban-American community. We have also been doing um, 
several projects and special projects with individuals who want to learn more about Cuba, so consulting type engagements and, and leveraging the fact that Cuba is now a subject that a lot of people want to know about. And now, thanks to also the RJI Fellowship and the work that we did here with, with a class at the University of Missouri last year, we're about to launch our membership model to go back and really monetize those divers and have them become a champion, uh, champions for our work. So I don't think we've tried any one. Um, I think we've tried several. Some have worked better than others, and the ones that are working better, we've doubled down on, and the ones that are working less, for example, ads, we have them, but I don't spend that much time selling advertisement. And how many full-time? We have uh, 12, uh, about 12 full-time reporters, be counting the individuals who are inside of Cuba and outside of Cuba. Hey, Alejandro. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was curious, um, in what way do you think the government will specifically target your organization once you have the new app and the new distribution platform, if at all? Well, it's hard. It's hard to really block something that lives virtually, right? And we've, we've made certain steps in, in the way that we built the app uh, so that we can uh, go around that, uh, that, that issue. I'm sure that the government will do it um, in, in one way or another. It's difficult to predict what the government is going to do uh, because there's always ways in which they can do it. However, I will say it's, it's very difficult to stop things in Cuba once they have organically uh, disseminated, right? It's very difficult to stop el paquete, the package, from amplifying into the, the population because there's nothing that you there's no one you can arrest there's no one you can uh, there's no books that you can burn I mean it's, it lives in a virtual world so who puts rules on the virtual world who puts uh, a jail cell on a virtual world it, it's it's difficult uh, to do so yes um, first of all uh, this is, sounds like an amazing thank you for doing it this kind of work is, is so important um, I'm very interested in particular uh, in the your beta trial with the Bluetooth sharing. Um, and I'd love to hear if you have any da data so far on how that works. And um, kind of a, a thought that was in my mind about it with your divers are, is, is there an interest amongst the, the divers to personalize and curate the story as they're pushing it out, right? Because, you know, as, as we, mm. you know, as we see on Twitter and stuff, there's a set of divers <laughs> in the world uh, who love to curate the news yeah. and, and push that out a, as part of their own story uh, and, and how they get. And so are, is that, are, are you seeing that, that people kind of take your content and make uh, some kind of offline newsletter almost uh, uh, mm. uh, in, a, in yeah. a curated fashion? So two things. First, this is definitely a team effort. And, and we have an incredible group of individuals in Cuba uh, who, who do the work uh, that we're doing. Our founder is, is a trailblazing woman. Her name is Ioani Sanchez, and it is perhaps the leading figure in independent uh, voice inside of the island. So I appreciate your comment, and it's not just me. We, we, we are a team, and we are very excited that we're a team because we need a lot of team players to rebuild an entire Cuban society. Um, the, the second point, it's very interesting, your, your creation point. Similar to Ventures Africa, there were a lot of similarities actually with Ventures Africa. There's a lot of, of development that we have to do with our reporters and our audience. On one hand, we have to make sure that we train our reporters to be better reporters and be better journalists. So the element of curation from a reporter's standpoint is difficult for us because a lot we, have, we still have to go through it in a gruesome editing process for, for a lot of our content. On the distribution side, we have to make sure that our readers are once again educated into being independent news readers and trusting that what we're putting out is not just a propaganda because for the for a long time that's all that the, that the Cuban citizens have been reading and so but that doesn't mean that the curation has not happened we've had instances in which people have asked us can we redistribute your content also offline um, and and that has been Google Groups has worked tremendously for us in, in doing that 
uh, and, and other people who have their own Google groups. I know we're beyond Google groups in this age, right? But I think we all remember them. And so we still use them. Uh, and the redistribution has happened through with that. Um, that has been inside of Cuba. Outside of Cuba, unfortunately, most of our content is being reproduced <laughs> without permission. <laughs> Um, so there's not much creation going on, but it is something that we've been, we've had, we've struggled with. Um, people share, they share, and they're actively sharing, but uh, a lot of people are also just, just taking, um, which is difficult. Alejandro Gonzalez, thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you very much.